Tonight, a Tumby Bay shed fire causes $1.2 million worth of damage and a streaky bay jockey slapped with a hefty penalty. From our seven Spencer Gold Studios, your nightly news with Ruby Kamane begins now. Good evening. A shed full of hay and farming equipment has been destroyed in a fire at a property near Tumby Bay. The damage bill is expected to be in the millions and couldn't come at a worse time for the owners, who had just begun to harvest. Our reporter Nathan Rector has more from the scene. The fierce blaze started here at this farming property on the outskirts of Tumby Bay just after midday, the owner's father raising the alarm. Three CFS trucks backed up by bulk water carrier rushed to the scene, but explosions and toxic smoke forced crews to watch on helplessly. Yeah, we just had to stamp, step back. We couldn't do nothing because of the tyres and that exploding. It's just not safe to go in there. No one was on the property at the time. It's understood the shed was full of hay bales, along with a diesel fuel tanker and loader. You'd think it'd be internal combustion of the hay. The thick black smoke billowed into the air, the destruction leaving nothing salvageable. We put a smoke warning out for Tumby Bay because it's blowing directly over the township. And um, yeah, it is quite strong. It couldn't come at a worse time for the owner who'd just started to harvest. Yeah, I just hope we don't have too many more of these. It's just one of them years, I think. Crews will remain on scene for a number of days until the fire is extinguished. It's estimated the damage bill will come to $1.2 million. The owner is insured. Cape Hardy and Port Spencer are in the spotlight as potential sites for South Australia's hydrogen hub. The production of green hydrogen could inject more than $1.7 billion into the national economy and support close to 3,000 jobs by the end of the decade, according to the government. Three suitable sites have been outlined, but the member for Giles says Port Benython would be the perfect fit. Wyala should be the, uh, the premier location in this state for hydrogen production and the jobs that go with it and the economic, economic diversification that goes with it. The government says Air Peninsula's wind and solar resources could position the state as a global exporter of clean hydrogen. Only 665 gel blasters have been handed into authorities since controversial new licensing laws were introduced last month. That number out of around 62,000 existing in South Australia. It comes as multiple regional businesses are protesting the changes, seeing the toys classified as a firearm, with the Gel Blasters Association launching a class action. Member for Frome Jeff Brock has written a letter to the Health Minister pleading for a response to a regional doctor shortage crisis. It comes after local practitioners raised concerns over long waiting lists in Port Pirie. Desperate for answers. Uh, I've written a, a letter to the Minister, Minister Health, uh, Stephen Wade, asking for an urgent meeting with him. Jeff Brock claiming waiting lists are leaving patients frustrated with too many barriers in place for international doctors to work regionally. Nearly 100 people per day that may be um, not being able to get an appointment with a doctor in Port Pirie. Federal Member for Grey, Rowan Ramsey, saying this is a widespread issue across regional South Australia. It's bad across Australia and it's chronic in South Australia. It's something I have been railing about um, for the last 20 years at least. Also saying it's hard to encourage city doctors to move. We can't say, you know, Dr A, you go to Port Piri. We can't make them come. In a statement, the Health Minister says the state government is working to attract clinicians to the regions by putting more funds into health facilities. But Jeff Brock is urging the crisis needs to be dealt with now. If we don't do something about this and really identify the issue, by Christmas time we could have down to about five or six doctors in Port Pirie alone. Shari Hams, 7 Spencer Golf News. Streaky Bay jockey Karen McAvoy is in hot water after he was found over whipping his horse Tiger Moth in yesterday's Melbourne Cup. It's understood the 40-year-old struck the horse 13 times before the 100-metre mark. The rules only allow jockeys to use the whip five times in that distance. The three-time cup winner has been fined $50,000 and has been suspended for 13 meetings. A Stansbury man has had his vehicle impounded after being caught allegedly drink driving at Roxby Downs. Shortly after 8 yesterday morning, patrols conducting static driver testing stopped the driver of a Holden sedan. The 36-year-old driver allegedly returned a blood alcohol reading of 0.057. He will appear in court at a later date. Still to come tonight, safety upgrades revealed for two Spencer Golf courthouses. 
and a desperate plea for more Lifeline volunteers in the lead up to Christmas. Welcome back. Port Pirie and Wyala's courthouses will receive much needed security upgrades as part of a state government initiative. Attorney General Vicky Chapman touched down in the Mid North today to unveil the plans. Increased staff, security scans, and protective barriers. Just some of the changes set to transform the courthouses at Port Pirie and Wyala. We want to make sure that whoever's visiting the court or working here uh, is free of uh, any intimidation or threat. More than $600,000 put on the table, with many set to benefit. It's really critical to us to protect victims, witnesses, relatives, parties, the people who work here and the people who visit here. The Attorney General is speaking with regional lawyers about the daily issues they encounter. This is something that was a critical and necessary change that needed to happen for the delivery of justice in the regions. With a large number of cases processed through this court, local barristers say it's not just big incidents that cause disruption. Somebody who maybe makes you feel a little bit odd or maybe is acting, acting a bit jittery. Um, and those things can really cause the tension to rise for everybody. Screen anyone coming into the court precinct who may be carrying a weapon, uh, might be uh, also uh, carrying material. Sometimes we have threatening letters, for example. Wyala and Port Pirie are two out of five towns selected in South Australia with future hopes for other courthouse security improvements in the regions. When you visit uh, Port Augusta or uh, courthouses in town, you really get a sense of the difference that it makes. Port Perry lawyers also calling for a resident magistrate. When you have a magistrate who is present in the town, in the community, people have a sense that um, the justice is present and that it matters. Shari Hams, 7 Spencer Gulf News. A mental health organisation says it's experiencing high demand for volunteers ahead of the busy festive season. Port Augusta's Lifeline now calling on the community to get involved and help support the cause. Helping those who need it most. Lifeline calling on the community to support the organisation which volunteers say is struggling in the lead up to Christmas. All of Lifeline stores, we need volunteers. We are lacking in volunteers everywhere. So they need them in Port Pirie, they need them in Clare, they need them in Wyala, they need them in Wallaroo. Those at Lifeline Port Augusta say donating their time is rewarding. Then they get to meet new people, they get new skills, um, it keeps them company. Some people just want to get out for the day. It gets you out of the house and meeting other people and working with other volunteers is really good. Community members of all ages now encouraged to get involved and help support the cause. People are school leavers now. They're quite welcome to come in. Um, it will help with their resume. Um, they learn skills in retail work and it doesn't matter what age. We're always on the grab for people. We just desperately you know, at the moment, you know, like we're having trouble filling positions here. So, yeah, we definitely need people to come in and put their name forward. Locals are invited to head in store and register their interest. It's a couple of hours, it could be one, two hours, it doesn't matter. It all helps. Every little bit helps. Katrina Musson, 7 Spencer Gulf News. Four creative Kimber women have come together to develop a new tourist hotspot for the town. What started as an old warehouse is now attracting floods of visitors, with many stopping by just to see the new creation. Workshop 26, a perfect example of girl power. These four women coming together with an idea which quickly turned into something much bigger. Workshop 26 is... Uh, we like to call it Kimber's Creative Quarter. It's a melting pot of makers and shakers and entrepreneurs. This space, consisting of multiple storeholders selling their very own products, visitors flooding in to see the new craze with the word spreading far and wide. We have travellers from anywhere possible with all the border closures, but we have people coming here that friends have recommended it, businesses have recommended it, free camping places have recommended it. Passionate about Kimber, these businesswomen have managed to proudly put their town back on the map. Tourists now calling Workshop 26 a must-see destination. One of our other founders, Barb, was uh, away and 
stumbled across this amazing place and took some photos and sent them through to us and we all just said, yes, when do we start? Eight weeks later, they had purchased the premises and transformed it into something magical. We have um, eight businesses working out of Workshop 26, open to the public. With co-founder and storeholder Heather selling restored and refurbished pieces of furniture and treasure. It's fabulous to be able to salvage things from the past and give them a new life. Minister Keith Pitt also touring the warehouse on his visit to Kimber yesterday, even making a purchase at one of the stalls. Sophia Contagonis, 7 Spencer Golf News. Stay with us after the break. NAIDOC award nominations soon coming to a close. And a Port Augusta bank doubling its donations for the CFS. Hello again. NAIDOC Week is fast approaching and Port Augusta residents are encouraged to nominate people for this year's awards. The honour providing the opportunity to recognise community members who make a difference during a week of acknowledgement of Indigenous achievements and history. Individuals, organisations and local businesses are eligible for the awards. Nominations close tomorrow. A Port Augusta bank is doubling its support for the Stirling North CFS, matching each dollar donated. The volunteer brigade putting on a sausage sizzle, with all funds raised going towards the service ahead of the bushfire season. Supporting a local volunteer organisation in the wake of the bushfire season. Beyond Bank Port Augusta today matching donations for Stirling North CFS. For every donation um, we receive, Beyond Bank will contribute or match that dollar uh, up to $5,000. Volunteers cooking up a snag with all money raised going towards the brigade as part of their Dollar Match Day campaign. It goes to our brigade, it helps us with um, our social events, buying PPE and equipment um, that the government does not provide for us, so any additional PPE that we require, any additional equipment. The CFS says it's grateful for the support. Beyond Bank are a long time partner with us, um, they do a huge amount of work behind the scenes for us and um, you know, we look forward to that ongoing support in the future and, and, and likewise we'll always provide our support to them when they need it too. Locals are encouraged to donate to help support the volunteer brigade. We love it, we do it to help the community and you know it's good for the community just to help us every now and then. They obviously give a lot to our community so um, by donating and showing support that's only a small thing that we can do compared to what they do for us. Beyond Bank is accepting donations via their website until 6am tomorrow. Katrina Musson, 7 Spencer Golf News. Wyala High School students took to the stage to perform their annual musical, ending their 2020 school year on a high note. The event, a team effort, with hospitality students also cooking up a storm for parents and friends. It's the well-loved musical across the globe. Dorothy, Scarecrow and of course Toto, all ready to perform in this school's end of year production, The Wizard of Oz. They've done an amazing job. We've got students right through from year 8 to year 10 working together right from the start of the year. And it's been a COVID year so the pressure's been on and they've coped brilliantly. The students coping by having to adapt to a new rehearsal style, diving into online classes during the height of the pandemic very proud. It's been a long haul so we start this you know in term one of the school term. We've all done such an amazing job with like the time that we've had and you know the circumstances. I think being in musical as one of model would also be very fun. I would like to continue doing that in the future. There's so many opportunities and experiences. The amount of friends I've made during this it's crazy. Hospitality students also helping out creating a delicious plate of food part of their assessments. We each have to create a dish that will be catered for everyone. I made a vegetarian burger. The Year 12 students from Edward John Air also catering, acting as role models to the other Year 10 students. These students haven't had any experience with catering wise, so it's good to have them to lean on. At Edward John Air High School we run specialist programs. Um, the chat program, which focuses on the cooking and hospitality industry, was asked to help cater for this event. An important event for the Year 12s, heading towards their ATAR. As part of the program and they work in the industry as well to give them experience and hopefully one day enter into the hospitality industry. Sophia Contagonis, 7 Spencer Golf News. Stay with us after the break. Nathan Rector will bring us this week's prices at the Bowser and we'll have all the weather details with Alex.
welcome back. Time now to see how things are shaping up at the petrol pump. Here's Nathan Rector with this week's Fuel Watch. There hasn't been much movement in petrol prices across our regional centres in the past seven days, with fuel still relatively cheap, so it could pay to fill up the tank if you get the chance. Starting with unleaded and here in Port Lincoln we've seen a four cent dip in the average price, now sitting on $1.16 a litre. All other regional centres haven't seen any movement at all, Wyla on $1.18 and Port Augusta on $1.19 a litre. Port Piri remains the cheapest in the region, averaging $1.15. Kadena and Broken Hill have stayed the same on $1.17 and $1.23 a litre. Adelaide has seen its price plummet down to $0.97 cents a litre, a $0.06 cent drop compared to last week. Moving over to diesel now and it's a bit of a mixed bag. Port Lincoln has seen a $0.02 cent hike now on $1.16 a litre, while Wyala and Port Augusta have both seen a drop, $1.15 and $1.17 respectively. Port Piri, Kadena and Broken Hill have all stayed the same, $1.14, $1.16 and $1.25 a litre. Broken Hill still the most expensive in the region. Adelaide again seeing a drop in price, now averaging $1.06. Taking a quick look at auto gas and all regional centres have stayed the same. Port Lincoln on $0.89, cents, Wyla $0.87, Port Augusta $0.89, Port Piri $0.81, Kadena $0.89 and Broken Hill $0.83. Adelaide has seen a marginal rise to 63 cents a litre. Now remember these prices are the regional averages and do not reflect any one particular outlet. And if you do find a spot that does sell unleaded diesel or auto gas for cheaper, make sure to let us know on our Facebook page. Time to take a look at what's happening in the weather, here's Alex. Thanks Ruby and good evening. Showers across most parts of the region today but that's expected to clear in time for the weekend. From 3pm today Port Augusta reached a max of 21 degrees, Clare a high of 16, Cooper Pedy a top of 28 degrees. In Woodna it was cloudy reaching a top of 22 degrees, Port Pirie also a top of 22, Wyala Windy getting to a maximum temperature of 18 degrees, Kadena and Port Lincoln a degree warmer both with a top of 19, Broken Hill cloudy and windy conditions a high of 27 and a shower or two in Adelaide a top of 18 degrees. Extensive cloud crossing north and central parts of South Australia with a trough is producing showers and thunderstorms, mainly over northwest pastoral and Flinders. Speckled low cloud pushing over central and southeastern areas under a cold and unstable air mass is causing showers. Moving on to tomorrow's weather outlook now and we'll start with the Gulf waters southwesterly 15 to 20 knots, increasing to southwesterly 20 to 25 knots during the afternoon, reaching to 30 knots north of Cal to Woolaroo later afternoon and early evening. Seas 1 to 1.5 metres swell south to southwesterly below 1 metre. To tomorrow's temperatures now, partly cloudy across parts of the region. Port Lincoln and Cleve both set to reach a max of 17 degrees. Woodna mainly fine, a top of 23. Wyala set to reach a high of 19, becoming windy and partly cloudy cloudy in Port Augusta a top of 21 degrees, Kadena partly cloudy a top of 20. Port Piri mainly fine a top of 21, Clare similar conditions 17 and Broken Hill wind easing then sunny a high of 20 degrees. Taking a look further through the week now and mainly fine conditions on Friday, sunny and 28 in Cooper Beatty, mainly fine in Broken Hill a top of 22, Port Augusta also a high of 22, windy in Port Piri 21, similar conditions in Wyala a top of 19, mainly fine in Kadena also 19 degrees, Port Lincoln 17, Adelaide 18. Conditions warming up even further on Saturday, sunny in Cooper Pedy, a top of 29, similar conditions in Port Augusta 25, mainly fine in Woodna also 25 degrees, Broken Hill and Wyala a top of 22, Kadena 23, Port Piri a degree warmer 24, Port Lincoln 19, Adelaide 21. Those sunny and fine conditions continuing through to sun Sunday, mainly fine in Cooper Pedy 32, Port Augusta 30, Port Piri a top of 29, Kadena 26, Port Lincoln 22, Whale and Broken Hill both a max of 26, Woodna a sunny 31 degrees. So Ruby, that's all in weather for tonight. It's back to you. Great, thanks for that Alex. 
And that's the local news this Wednesday evening. Thanks for joining us. I'll have updates later. Until then, enjoy your evening. Good night. Thank you.